Right, in this video I'm just going to help to clarify practically what I said in my part 2 video on difficult electrical problems to solve. Uh, so this is more of a practical way of demonstrating what I meant. Okay, so we have our battery exposed with the positive terminal just there uh, on the Honda Civic. There's the terminal. Green lights on. This is a decent battery. Negative terminals there. So the point of this video is to prove whether or not the negative terminal on the battery is at zero volts. Because most people, what they think of uh, is that must be at zero and that must be at say 12.6. Okay. And uh, but the thing is, we use a multimeter set it at 20 volts, what it actually finds is it finds the potential difference, so the electrical potential difference between that terminal and that terminal. That's all it does. Uh, there's other potential differences that are measured in physics, for example, gravitational potential difference. Okay, uh, That's the energy between one height and another. Electrical potential energy is similar. Okay, There's no definite um, when you measure two terminals you can't definitely say that that must be zero and that must be 12.5 all right because we are re what is our reference that's the thing what it does measure however it's the difference between the two terminals right so what it is we'll just do a, a, a couple of um, quick tests just to show you so you should see the lights are reflecting properly uh, 12 point something right Let's do the red to red. So red is positive. Uh, red is the one they keep covered up, so you know they must be the one that you shouldn't touch and touch earth. There it is 12.83. 12.83 volts. Uh, see that again. Now with the alternator on, the alternator is going to be charging it. I might, if your alternator is half good, at least 13 half volts. If it's a good alternator, it will be charging it at 14 something volts. 14.5. If it's a bad alternator, anything over 15 would be also a bad one. Anything under 13 would also be bad. So let's, let's just check it. It'll be a bit noisy. So there's no moving parts under there. That's why I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't leave that on the other side in moving parts. So, here it is again, 14.05, so that's the voltage, so really, I would say that alternator on the Honda is kind of on its way out, if you ask me, uh, because I was expecting something like 14.6, but Plenty of life left in it, but still, you could say it's on its way out. 14.6 is what I expect. Anything under 13, you better change the alternator. It's on 14.2, it's losing its potency. I've had alternators do the reverse and, uh, and charge it too much as well, and burn out the battery. So, 14.2, okay. Only just powered down the, uh, the car. Now, what was it? It was at 12.83, wasn't it? Right. So now, because it's been charging, you'll expect it to be elevated, maybe 13, over 13 now. Yeah, 13.3. And it's just just the chemicals in it being hypercharged for a little bit. And it, but it will settle, give it an hour or so, it'll be back down to uh, 12.83. Okay, that's the way batteries work. Right, so the main question, we're going to answer the main question now. What is the potential difference between our, let's close that so we can't, can't have any accidents. What's the potential difference between that negative terminal battery and the best ground that I can get, the best ground that I can get. Now don't do this at home kids. Like I said before, is the earth 
terminal. If you're in the USA, you won't have this. Don't do this at all. We have our um, neutral and live. Which way around is it? No, nope. live is that one. Where's the fuse? When I open a plug, it's over there. Fuse is that side. So that's live, that's neutral. Whatever you do, don't mess around with those two. However, that's earth. So when I mentioned earth before in my previous video, and I said, look, lightning rods. If you've got lightning rods where you live and it's embedded in your ground, that would be earth. That would be true earth. This probably isn't true earth because this is connected to the factory somewhere. This earth, okay? But the true earth would be, say, lightning rod bedded in the ground or maybe the pipes in your home uh, sometimes the earth is connected to the pipes in your home the, the water pipes especially if, of course they're copper uh, not plastic of course that will give you a true earth however even saying that this is why electricity is a complicated subject to go in there I'd rather not sometimes however since I started I'll finish so let's say for given two days, a day just before a thunderstorm would give you a more of a negative earth. It'd be so what I mean by that would be fewer electrons running around in the ground basically, right? The day after a thunderstorm with electric strike, uh, strikes of course, you will all the electrons that are up in the sky will be blasted down into the ground and, and uh, you'll have more you'll have more of a that's why you normally feel better after a lightning storm because the electrons have come back okay so it will actually be more of a what you call a true I would say um, earth after a lightning storm because the electrons have come back there is no positive charge on the earth however that's the best one I got at the moment that earth there I'm not just going to stick this straight in taking the trouble to uh, take apart the plug, the earthing bit. So that's absolutely safe to do. Do that. What is it? Let's get our big question answered. And which way round should it be? I'm going to put this in there because I think there's. I think my theory says there's, there's a bit of charge in there. So that's not zero. Right, so we should find out. I'll get out of the way. Get this cable out of the way. So, hang on a second. And do this. Let's get that on there first. Notice I've done it on my Honda, not on my Ford. Because okay, the Honda would be less sensitive to you know, the ECU on it. There we go, look. There we go. And I did it. Notice before I put the red one on the positive, the black one on the negative terminal of the battery, and I, you know, I got that positive reading, didn't I? It was a positive 12.83, remember? Right, so now, as I suggested, the battery terminal there on the negative, uh, so I'm thinking there's a bit of charge from there, and it's going through my uh, multimeter, and it's going back down to true, true-ish earth. Okay, let's do that again. There we go, see that? 0.1 volts. And what did I say in the other video? 0.1 volts, didn't I? Remember that? Oh no, I, put, I said one volt on the previous video, oh, but I'm just exaggerating, just to make a point. Now, one more thing. Uh, see if I can find the ground. I don't think I can. If I can find the ground, I can measure the, the potential difference between the, the chassis of the car and the negative terminal but not the battery, but near it. Let's have a look. If I put that one there, I mean, I could really put it on there if I want. And maybe just touch that bit there. I need to find a true ground. It's not, not what, there it is, there it is. See that? See that? This is what I was trying to explain. So I've got this jammed into the, a bolt on the engine. See it? 0.03 volts. Remember what I said about electricity being like um, uh, uh, similar to flowing water, right? It wouldn't, the electricity would not flow from the uh, car's uh, chassis into the negative terminal on the battery unless it was at a slightly higher voltage. So the potential is slightly higher in the car's body, in the chassis. Otherwise it wouldn't flow, just like water wouldn't flow from 
it would just stay in the, it would stay in the stag stagnant pool with it wasn't a, a difference in gravitational potential energy here we've got a difference in electrical potential energy in between even the ch chassis of the car and this close to what well, a uh, very close point to the uh, negative terminal on this battery see that it's a bit gone now no, no, it's still there 0.02 and likewise you know between that's how electricity flows right for high potential to a low potential this is what I meant also in my previous video and I'll put a link to it all right hope that explains it a little bit better so there is a and in that video I said like the body of the car is two volts I'm exaggerating 0.02 okay okay just to make a point and I said oh the uh, the battery is one volt and I'm exaggerating it was in this case I think was it 0.1 volts uh, so there's a difference between voltage between the chassis of the car to there there's a higher voltage in the body of the car a lower voltage on the negative terminal battery and also likewise there's a like I said I proved there is a this is not zero if I measure it to there and I and I bet if I was to measure that to a, a lightning rod stuck in the ground, this negative, uh, this um, earthing point will have some charge in it compared to the uh, lightning rod in the ground. And if the lightning strikes, it will change. Or if it just just before electrical storm, that would change as well. That's what I'm trying to explain. This, and the whole point in my part one, part two videos is to say electrical problems can be uh, caused by all sorts of things like uh, somewhere where it shouldn't be at if you've got a blown light bulb there's a high voltage at that blown light bulb point because it didn't pass that way you didn't drop a voltage you didn't drop some voltage and it's anyway that's all Thanks for watching. Yeah, like Hope that explains some of it. Yeah.